justice! No peace! No justice! No peace! While people all over the country protested George Floyd's death, Jerry Falwell Jr., one of America's most prominent evangelical leaders, went on TV to describe his own tweet. Mask, and I said, fine. The, he, starting Friday, we all have to wear masks in Virginia. I said, fine, I'll reluctantly wear it, but only if it's got a picture of Governor Blackface on the mask. It was a convoluted dig at Virginia Governor Ralph Northam, who had just instituted an ordinance requiring masks to prevent COVID-19. Falwell later said he was trying to make the point that Democrats were the real racists, but the tweet was a tipping point for many at Liberty University, one of America's largest Christian schools, where Falwell is the president. Like, why, why would you even do that? That really hurt when I saw that tweet. Kevon Scott is one of more than two dozen Liberty staff, students, and alumni we spoke with, who said Falwell's tweet brought up problems they'd had with the school for a long time, forcing a racial reckoning. What was it like to be a Black student on the Liberty campus? If you're not in sports, it was hard. <laughs> To be honest, people are automatically look at you like you're different. Sometimes I was literally the only black person in the classroom, which was really uncomfortable for me. I didn't like really fit in with anybody sometimes. So it was it was hard. So I was isolated a lot of times. There were so many um, students who came into our office all the time and expressed frustration with um, just the, the lack of support for them on this campus. When they have speakers come into convocation that actively speak against their experience and speak against their identity as minorities. I grew up in a country that is not racist. Lee Kwan McLaurin graduated from Liberty in 2015 and worked at the school as the director of diversity retention. He wasn't familiar with Liberty's history before he enrolled. I actually didn't even know that Jerry Singer existed until I got to Liberty. There's so many other like students of color who come to the institution and are not aware of who Jerry Singer is or, or what he stood for. They talk about Jerry Singer, but only in the most positive of light. You said it took you a long time to get over racism. Yes, in my own heart, I came to the full realization that this is absolutely wrong and that no matter what happens, if I lose the pulpit, I'm going to do what's right. Liberty was founded by Falwell's dad, Jerry Sr., who made a name for himself as a televangelist and pastor of one of the country's largest congregations. In 1967, he founded Lynchburg Christian Academy, described in the press at the time as a private school for white students. He followed that up four years later with Liberty University. He solidified his power as a founding member of the Moral Majority, a conservative activist group that established the religious right as a political force to be reckoned with, opposing a gay lifestyle, equal rights for women, and at least at one time, embraced segregationist views. Minister Mina Mora graduated from Liberty in 1997, while Senior was still in charge. Did you know much about the school before you got there? I did. I grew up, you know, in a very evangelical Christian home. So I was kind of one of the unique African-Americans, probably maybe to some degree. Um, my mom would have on Christian TV all the time. And so if you grew up like in that era, then you were watching the 700 Club. I didn't know the climate, though, which is very different. There were students, in, you know, who would drive around in their cars sometimes with the Confederate flag, either bumper sticker or, or tag to a certain degree as well. And so you knew your place. Walking in, I can remember going, this feels different. And you knew that you were outnumbered. You knew, OK, this is very right wing conservative. When Senior died in 2007, Jerry Falwell Jr. turned the school into a massive moneymaker, growing online enrollment to over 100,000 students and investing over $1.5 billion in campus facilities and improving the school's athletic department. But according to internal documents shared by former staffers with Vice News, the percentage of Black undergraduate students on campus dropped from 10% to 5% in the 10 years after Falwell Jr. took over. Do you think Liberty is being honest with prospective students about you know, what the minority experience will be like for them on campus? I've seen the videos that, and, and had to participate in the videos that talk about the you know, diversity experience on campus and it's fabrication. So when you see the school say that they're a leader in providing educational opportunities for minorities, what is your reaction to that? It's laughable. I, I don't think there's anything else to say to it. There, there's, it, it's, it, it's, it's laughable. 
McLaurin says Falwell's mask tweet made it clear the diversity issues weren't going to improve. So in June, he was among a handful of staffers to resign. He created a GoFundMe called the LU Underground Railroad to help others, quote, leave behind a toxic, unhealthy workplace. 35 Black faith leaders and Liberty alumni wrote an open letter to Falwell condemning the tweet and encouraging him to resign, writing, it has become obvious to many that your heart is in politics more than Christian academia or ministry. It's since been signed by almost 40,000 people. Several star athletes also announced this summer they'd be leaving the school. I just need for people to understand that, you know, you can't just disrespect my culture and expect me to stand on that and, and stay and represent that. Basketball player Asia Todd said she was transferring due to racial insensitivity. I had to do what I felt was best within my heart and stand up for what is right. Was that tweet a turning point for you in terms of how you felt about the school? It definitely crossed the line for me. I know that there's going to be racism everywhere, but when it comes from your the leader that's supposed to be leading the school that you're attending, it makes you feel like your value is not more, no more than what you can do on the court. The school let the resignations pass without an official comment, but chose to address the athlete's departure on Twitter, saying they were saddened to see them transfer. And Falwell did eventually delete the tweet and apologize, sort of. You know, I just felt like people needed to be reminded who he was. But some said they've been watching Jerry Jr. walk back offensive comments for years, only after being publicly scolded, like the time he told students to carry weapons in case Muslims started a school shooting. If more good people had concealed carry permits, then we could end those Muslims before they before they walk in and kill them. Terrorist would have been a good word to use too. I just was referring to those particular people and they were motivated by their religion. And so it, it was a relevant term for that particular event. So this newest apology didn't really impress them. No disrespect to him, but I don't believe it. The only reason why he did that was because his back was against the wall. Everything is coming out in public. You can't sweep this under the rug this time. A lot of students say the damage was really done years ago when Falwell decided to give Donald Trump a full-throated endorsement. Donald Trump is a breath of fresh air in a nation where the political establishment from both parties has betrayed their constituencies time and time again. I wish I would spoke up a lot sooner, but I can look at me today and go, going forward, those things personally will not go unchecked. I guess what drew the line for me was I was on a call and it was with uh, a black student who wanted to go online. The one thing that she did ask me was, you know, how's the diversity there? I had the longest pause <laughs> and I didn't I didn't know what to tell her because I didn't want to lie to her. If the call was recorded, I would tell you not to come to this school because the diversity is horrible. Jerry Falwell is a symptom of a disease and the disease is institutional racism. I'm calling you to the carpet to be the Christian that you say that you are because I guarantee you, Jesus is not okay with this. We tried to speak with Falwell, but he declined our request for an interview through a university spokesperson. The school also declined to comment on diversity statistics, the recent departures of staff and students, and any of the other allegations raised in this story. But as the Black Lives Matter movement continues to hold institutions accountable, and evangelicals become more frustrated with politics muddying their faith, this could be the moment that shakes Liberty University's standing as a political powerhouse, just months before the 2020 election. I think the evangelical body needs to ask themselves, do they want to be on this island that's radicalized, that is far from everyone else? And if they want to be on that island, man, the, the boat is not coming back. 